Here's a public service announcement. The hormone product Biest does not protect adequately against bone loss. So estrogen's role in bone health is very clear. Estrogen is crucial for maintaining and building bone density in postmenopausal women. Many women rely on hormone replacement therapy to prevent bone loss, but not all HRT options are equally effective. You've heard me talk about estradiol probably quite a bit. You probably haven't heard me talk much about Biest. Well, Biest is a common hormone replacement therapy. We see a lot in the functional medicine space and integrative space. Biest is a combination of estriol, which is a form of estrogen, and estradiol. What's interesting about using Biest is that when you look at the literature on bone health, it's always using estrogen of some form, but almost never that I've found ever estriol. But yet I hear providers say, I'm going to provide a Biest, which is a frequently mostly estriol, and it's going to have the same impact as estradiol because it's estrogen. That's silly. We really need to be more evidence-based. So in this video, we're going to explore the challenges with Biest, why I don't recommend it, especially for bone health. And I'm going to present one very compelling study. All right. So there are three primary estrogens in women. There's estrone, estradiol, and estriol. The metabolism between them and the other hormones is fascinating, but I won't bore you with that here. The critical facts are that estradiol is the most potent and predominant form of estrogen during a woman's fertile years. Estrone is always present, but becomes the primary estrogen in postmenopausal women, not on HRT. It does convert to estradiol a little bit, but it provides very little compared to premenopausal levels of estradiol. Now, what about estriol? Well, estriol is interesting. There really is not a lot of estriol during the vast majority of a woman's life, except when she's pregnant. So during pregnancy, estriol levels rise. It has relatively low estrogenic activity, especially when compared to estradiol. It's not particularly potent. It's actually produced by the placenta, which is why we don't see it in large quantities outside of pregnancy. Some studies would say that it's safer, and that might be true, but it also isn't effective at doing the things that we want it to do. And so I see this error frequently in clinical decision-making where less evidence might think that it's safer, but we don't know that because we don't have the evidence. And so again, I see this a lot in testosterone as well, where, well, testosterone doesn't seem to have the same risk as estrogen, so I'm gonna use this instead of estrogen. But in women, testosterone converts to estradiol, so are you really avoiding that risk? I think with estriol, we're just trading the unknown for the known. We're saying, oh, we're gonna use estriol because it's safer, and it has been studied, and it does appear to be safe, but it also doesn't have the impact that we're looking for. We know that it's not great for bone. I'm gonna show you just how effective that is in this study that I ran across a couple of weeks ago. So let's talk about this study. So this is a, a 2007 randomized control trial. The study actually shows really cool stuff. So this is a study on 120 postmenopausal women. They were looking to evaluate three different doses of estradiol. So this is actually an estradiol study, but women were divided into four groups and the quote unquote control group was not a placebo group, they were actually given estriol. So they were given oral estriol at two milligrams, and then the other groups were giving varying doses of estradiol, 1.25, 2.5, and five grams per day. And that was transdermal. And so you are now able to compare these four groups. What's interesting in the study is they clearly state, we chose estriol because we know that it doesn't protect bone. Now, again, that kind of blew my mind because so many providers are using biased, which is for most people, 80% estriol and thinking that it's going to have an impact on bone. It's not. So then for this study, they followed them for 12 months and they repeated bone mineral density at six and 12 months. And they actually use quantitative CT instead of DEXA. So you get a more accurate finding. So what they found is that in the estradiol group that women saw an increase in bone mineral density, as you would expect. The most impactful difference was in the biggest dose, the five gram per day that led to an almost 9% increase in bone mineral density over 12 months. That was pretty awesome. So the lower two groups saw less of an increase. So this is point number one for the study for me, which is that there is a threshold level that we need to meet in order for us to improve bone health in most women and low doses of estradiol are not gonna get there for most women. So we need to consider what is the appropriate dose for a particular person, and in this study we showed that the higher the dose of estradiol, the bigger the impact on bone mineral density. So what about the estriol group? This is about estriol, actually. And so what's interesting here is that in the quote-unquote control group, they lost over the course of 12 months 1.44% of their bone mineral density. They didn't gain 1.44, 
they lost 1.44, which is what we would expect to see in a control group that's on a placebo. So indeed, Estriol did not protect this group compared to what I would expect from placebo. Now you can even go a step further because this study actually separated out women who had gone through a surgical menopause versus a natural menopause. And this is kind of a bigger conversation, but what's interesting is that in the surgical menopause group, women that were on estriol actually lost over 7% of their bone mineral density in 12 months. So the follow-up to that though is to say, well, how much improvement did that surgical menopause group see with estradiol? And the highest dose estradiol group saw an over 13% increase in bone mineral density in 12 months. Now, surgical menopause is different than natural menopause because it happens very suddenly and there is no production of endogenous hormones, whereas in women that go through a natural menopause, there is some still production of hormones, probably at a very low level, but there are reasons why surgical menopause patients are going to have such dramatically different impacts from estradiol and even estriol in this case. Now, I think the critical error in this study is that they did not report estradiol levels, which is so sad because this is a study that we'll probably never see repeated again. I would have loved to see what their serum estradiol levels were, but they didn't report it. They probably didn't measure it, so we don't know. So we'll have to assume that in this study, the higher the dose, the better. What was their level? I don't know. It was probably north of that 60 to 80 picogram per ml threshold would be my guess. So then what about biased? Biased is a combination, like I said, of estradiol and estriol. It is usually written as biased 80-20, biased 50-50. The first number is generally estriol and the second number is estradiol. This can obviously go back and forth. So be very careful with how doctors are writing this because you can say biased 50-50, estradiol, 50, estriol, 50, but you could also say 80-20 and make it 80% estradiol. You can do whatever you want, but it's usually 80-20 estriol at 80 and 20% at estradiol. So you can imagine the one milligram per ml biased is going to be very, very little estradiol and is certainly not going to reach our threshold of need when it comes to bone health. So in the end, estriol is very popular because it is commonly taught to be used in the functional medicine space, in the integrative space. It's, it's thought to be safer, but it might just be less studied. It is protective of breast cancer in some studies, but so is estradiol. So it helps some doctors to sleep at night because they have so much fear around estradiol, but they just need to understand what's actually happening in the literature, the updated literature around estradiol to be able to sleep at night and provide adequate doses in adequate forms to their patients. From a bone health perspective, estriol does nothing, does less than what I would expect. So if you're worried about your bone health and you're taking hormone replacement therapy, at least partially for that reason, I would strongly encourage you not to use biased. If you want to learn more about HRT, consider downloading my book or joining our free masterclass where we talk about the top 10 reasons why hormones might be failing a woman. So look for the link in the description on YouTube. And if you're listening to this on a podcast, you can go to our website, pemabioidentical.com. That's P-E-M-A, bioidentical.com. And you can learn more about the book in the masterclass there. I'll see you in the next video.